Fam.news. He didn't invent the anti-sex mattress that Olympic athletes will be sleeping on this summer in Paris, but he works for the company that makes this innovative product. Is it really anti-sex? We're going to talk about that. It ended up in the New York Post. Friend of the pod, member of the fan, Brett Thornton is here to talk about his new role with Airweave, the Japanese company that turned fishing line <laughs> into an incredible comfort component. The fan podcast starts right now. Hey, are you a mattress retailer looking to supercharge your business? Introducing Podium, your secret weapon. I use it, I'm a huge fan of it. And with Podium's AI powered lead conversion, you can engage with customers in seconds via text, making it feel like they're talking to a friend. But hey, that's just the beginning. Podium offers texting, payments, reviews, website chat, and more all in one place. You've gotta be the most responsive retailer to help customers solve those sleep problems in the moment. Harness the power of Podium today and start growing your business Visit Podium.com right now to learn more. Welcome to the FAM Podcast with Mark Kinsley. This is where the best in the betting business get even better. Welcome to the FAM Podcast. BT, what's up, man? How you doing? What is up? My sliding intro did not go as planned. I was I was planning for it to be super slick and stop right here and just go right into a piece and uh, overshot it a little bit, but that's okay. You know, overshot. Oh, you came in hot, man. You came in hot. You're redlining there. And if you're listening to the show right now, instead of watching it, yeah, BT and I had this perfect plan where he's gonna slide onto the screen, throw up uh, the deuces sign, and uh, make it all smooth. But it it was pretty rocky. Yep. <laughs> pretty rocky, but you know, just fix it in post, buddy. Fix, fix it, it in post. post. You know what's not rocky yeah. is your new foray into this wild adventure with this Japanese company called Airweave. I got to start somewhere. So let's start yep. in Japan, okay? Let's fly over the Pacific yep. Ocean in our minds and let's put you on a bullet train in Japan going to experience this product with the top salesperson in all of Japan. You told me one of the first things you noticed is, number one, there are no mattress stores anywhere in Japan. Is that true? Yes, this is factual. Um... And it's, it's kind of mind blowing, right? When you think about our entire industry, I mean, my life, your life over the last, you know, 20 years has been, you know, in retail, in this business, in standalone stores, in all these concepts around the country, there's not one mattress standalone store in all of Japan. Okay. How does it work? How do people buy mattresses? Yeah. So this is what's crazy. So in, in Japan, because real estate is so tight, right? You have so many people in the cities and small uh, every few blocks, legitimately, like five, six, seven blocks, there's a department store. But it's not a department store like you would think about. We think of, we, you say department store, you think Macy's, Northern, whatever, right? These big buildings with all kinds of different opportunities and malls where there's all these shopping zones. Well, there, what they are is their structures. It's called 10 to 20 stores high. Generally very square because it's just a big building going up. And every single floor has a different theme, right? Men's, women's, children's, blah, blah, blah. It goes up. And you get to the top floor. For whatever reason, every single one of these department stores, the very top floor is home furnishings. You get up to home furnishings and you look around and it's basically all these different companies that have their own store inside of this mall setting, right? Inside of this department store. And basically it's their own employees and everyone's on commission. And it's almost like going to a fair home show where you're walking down the aisle and people are trying to pull you in, right? And check it out. That's on every single floor. So there is no mall or there is no department store. There's just a thousand companies with their own individual stores there. And all they do is pay a royalty or not royalty. They basically pay instead of rent, they pay rev, right? So you have a rev share and every single person is doing that. And in Japan, Airweave has 250 of these around the country. They're everywhere. So I went to, I think, 12. I just went around and ultimately their number one salesperson in all of Japan is this incredibly sweet lady in her 50s. She's the best. But she was literally halfway across the island. And so what do you do when you're in Japan? You hop on a bullet train, literally like right past Mount Kilimanjaro, over into this mall. Next thing I know, within an hour and a half, I'm halfway across Japan, up on floor 16 of this building. And I go through this entire pitch from this lady and it's lights out, like incredible. One of the best pitches I've ever been through. And I was like, okay, I get it. Like I completely get it. All right, take us into the pitch. And we're going to come back to the, uh, the anti-sex mattress for Olympic athletes that ended up in the New York Post. But, you know, I, I can't, gloss over hearing a good pitch. So, so help us yes. paint a picture for us. All right, so I'll paint a picture for you, right? So imagine you're on this floor, you're walking down, you see this whole section on the, to the left, air weave, you know, cool light boxes and all this kind of beds and stuff. 
um, and a big screen, a floor to ceiling screen. That's like uh, basically a video of what's happening walking by. So you're already kind of like, what's happening here, right? Lady comes up and instead of going and trying to bed or trying to pull you in, there's actually just two chairs sitting there and she just invites you to sit down and you sit down on this piece of memory foam, right? And basically you sit down. You don't even know why you're sitting down. She's just sitting down and introducing herself. And then she says, Hey, by the way, like after a few seconds of the conversation, she's like, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to just lift your knees up in the air and then try to rotate and move your body. Well, of course, as you know, you're sunk really far in when you try to lift your feet up and you try to move, you can't move. You literally, you're stuck in this thing because you're sunk way down in it, right? So you're kind of like laugh because it feels funny and you feel super awkward. And she goes, hey, now step, just slide over on this chair and sit on this piece. And of course, there's one of our, you know, air weave seat cushions that we sell, uh, shameless plug. And so you sit on it. And of course, the entire purpose of the air fiber material is to be, we call it high rebound there, but, but here we're calling it more quick response, you know, quick rebound. But basically, it's active every moment mo- time you move right it's going to react really fast and so you can sit on it lift your legs up and completely move rotate spin around do whatever and it was like this is a such a different feeling and so she explains right that that at night we all move around some more than others but we all move around and at the end of the day if you're sleeping in something where you're really sunk in low your body actually has to wake up enough out of deep sleep to forcefully move out of that position and that that causes you to lose being in deep sleep, which we all know the benefits. We can go on and on about that. So the idea is that you're actually properly aligned, right, for your back, spine, and all that. But you, but the material is responding so quickly that you can effortlessly turn. So she already sold me on this. Like, this is, is kind of cool. And then I'm expecting she's going to take me to a bed, but she doesn't. She's like, come over here. Stand over here. So there's like two footprints. I stand on them. And then, boom, she turns this camera on. So now I'm up on the screen. And the and the machine the basically the big screen is a giant camera essentially right takes a picture of me from the front turn to the side takes a picture I put in my measurements hit the button AI starts working boom it spits out and says the best way that you could enjoy an airweave mattress for the optimal support best for your body style body height body type is this configuration and the whole thing about airweave is all the blocks it's made of blocks and the blocks can be flipped and each side has a different you know component on it so like this particular block. This top side is extra firm. So if you see me, like I can barely push into it, but the bottom is soft. I can push into it really quick on the same piece of material. So essentially you can have the blocks, you can flip it this way, this way, and there's six and you can rotate them. So the, the purpose is that at the end of the day, we all know that everyone sleeps differently. We all know we need different support. And so whether you're, you're a unique feel or you've got a couple or two partners, each side is independent. So it tells you what to do. But as we all know, we love to see a computer or a system tell us as opposed to a person. So all of a sudden, boom, it spits on the screen, has the bed, the blocks move around and rotate. And then it sits in the perfect thing. It's like, you should be on a one, two, three, and set it this way. So then you go over to the demo bed and then she physically flips the whole bed for you, zips it back up, gives you a napkin, and then you lay down on your set, right? Which, so that whole process takes like, and I was already like, this is pretty lights out, right? Like so experiential, educational, like had a little mind blowing element with the seed thing that was funny and then onto a product. So it's a very quick demo that really, really works. And so I instantly, I got it, right? I was like, okay, this is cool. But of course, it's just so different than what we have here and what we've been telling people for 20 years, what I've been telling people for 20 years, right? Like I'm talking pressure relief and all these different things and let the things sink in around you and all these things for so long. And there's not that there's not benefit in that. There definitely is. But this product is a firm product. And and that's what we're selling. We're not trying to be something that we're not, right? And so are there people that, hey, I want to sleep on a bed that feels like an absolute cloud, 100%. And you know what? Good for you. Love it. That's awesome. That's not air weak. But if you want to be on top, so you're getting like this incredible support and then be able to completely function it to exactly how you want it to be, so you wake up feeling refreshed every day, like that's us, right? And so it's a unique market that we're trying to play in, which is no one's really going after right now, which is kind of that really firm market, which is our wheelhouse. And so that's what we're going to go after. And the reality is, is that's all just the material part. And then you roll into the secondary part, which is all of a sudden you go to the right, you see all these different things, water and steam, and you're like, what is happening here? And the reality is you want to talk about breathable product, right? 90% air. And so the science is, is that on our product, you, you, because it's so regulatory and it cools you down so fast in the interim that it's, the, it's one of the quickest products in the world to fall asleep on because it's so cool, right? 
And so you don't need layers of other foams. You just have this one proprietary material and you can have it in different formulations, right? So you're sleeping cool. And then of course, this is 100% washable. You take the blocks out and legitimately go to your shower, spray it down. You take the, you take the entire cover of this mattress, put it in your washing machine. So you're talking about someone who has allergies. You're talking about someone who's afraid of dust mites and wants to get them out of their bed. You're talking about someone who's afraid of bed bugs, right? Like the, the, all of that side of it is just a, a benefit beyond this incredible product. And then, and this is when the sales pitch ends, because I'm already, I'm sure lost everybody, you know, just talking about my own stuff. But the last part is at the end of the life cycle, 10 years down the road, all these blocks go into the recycle completely. What's it made out of? Recycled. Fishing line? So that's a great question there. Almost like a segue. Almost like we planned. Well, you told me that. You said that you said the guy that invented this product, his family had like a fishing line company. And he figured, I mean, if you look at this, if you're watching on YouTube or on social here, I mean, obviously you can see what BT is holding up. Like this block looks like a bunch of squiggly fishing line baked together. Yep. Uh, Yep. And then, and then if somehow you formulate it in a way that actually has different, you know, firmnesses on both sides, but that's what it looks like. It looks like fishing line baked together. Yep. And, and, and you can see it on this video that's kind of playing behind me, but the wild thing is to watch it. So when I was in Japan, actually at the original factory and I saw the new factory, like we have these machines everywhere, this is dripping down into water and it's spun in a million different ways. And so the way that you actually change the support layer is by tightening the weaves and increasing the density, right? So if you increase the density of the material on top and then you tighten the weaves, it becomes firmer. By opening the weaves and making them a little bit looser and then, and then making it a little bit smaller, it makes it softer. So you don't have to lose the principles, the awesome principles. You're just changing the way that you're formulating it. So this, the machine can do anything that you program it into. But this is what's so exciting about this is like, you've all, we've all been fishing, right? Like, A, you know, like when you go to buy a fishing reel, you, this much fishing line is like 40 bucks for like a little thing of fishing line, right? Why? Because it's such a, a unique, incredible product, but it's also not inexpensive to make. It's an expensive process. But the reason why it's so incredible is because think about you have a teeny line of fishing line you throw out there and you can catch a 60 pound salmon that's fighting you and it never snaps, right? Like, so think about from a durability perspective, this material was insane. So our CEO, Mr. T, as we call him, he's a brilliant engineer and he's obviously really smart. So he goes to get his graduate degree at Stanford. So he grows up in Tokyo, you know, he, he's a brilliant guy. He's like, I want to do further education. And I've always wanted to go to America, moves to the Bay Area, goes, gets his graduate degree at Stanford while there. He's thinking about his uncle's company, which is struggling, which is a fishing line company, right? Because he's going, this material is mind-blowingly amazing. It can't be just for this. Like, it can't have one function. So he gets his graduate degree in engineering from Stanford. So very, you know, smart dude. Goes back, ends up as a young kid, fresh out of graduate school, takes over his uncle's fishing line business, brings that back because he's an incredible entrepreneur, business guy. He's just one of these people you want to be around. He's so fun. Um, But as he's doing that, He's looking at this material and figuring out like there's got to be a better way. And actually, the first thing he creates is a topper. He creates a topper to provide good support for people who had mattresses that weren't giving good support. So that was actually the first thing he made was a cool topper. And then right off the bat, he got involved with the Olympics in 2008. So he had started out in like 2007 and 2008. He was like, I want to give toppers to the athletes, to the Japanese athletes, to give them an edge, right? Like, because they're sleeping on these horrible beds at wherever the Olympic was in 2008. So he made these toppers. And the rest is history. That blew up. It went from toppers to futons. That became the massive business for you know six, seven years, pills and all that. And then they eventually got into mattresses, and then the rest is history. But the 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 every they've been involved in every single game since then, and it's pretty amazing what they do. You know, originally for the Japanese team, and then eventually for everywhere else. Well, we got to go there for a minute because y'all ended up in the New York Post, and the headline was this: the surprising truth about the Olympic Games anti-sex beds. Okay, so first of all, (laughs) where did this idea that that the mattresses were anti-sex come from? Yeah, it's actually, it came from the Tokyo Games. So this started in 2021, which if you guys remember, the 2020 Games were postponed because of COVID to 2021. So then 2021 is when the Games were actually in Japan. And this headline went viral, right? Because Airweave was all 16,000 athletes sleeping on this bed. But the thing is, is that in Tokyo, um, for the Olympics, it wasn't just the mattresses. They had to figure out a way to, what are you going to put them on? So traditionally, right? Like every year or every four years or two years, I guess I should say, because of each Olympics, there's an Olympic village 
And whoever had the bid for mattresses and whatever, they had to also buy beds, like wood beds or box spring beds, all which is 16000 is crazy to bring all that in, right? And then it's all wasted. That Like, where does it go? It was like a huge ordeal. So they worked with a designer to actually make a cardboard bed, a bed frame. And, and the beds are only three feet wide, you know, they're t- traditional, like twin XL kind of length, but like three feet wide. So a little shorter than a traditional twin. Cause they got to, you know, they're sending them out for 16,000 athletes and then it's going on cardboard. So someone, when they got there, started this, this rumor that basically this was the Olympics trying to, cause we all know that the, 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 the rumors are is that there's like sex is just out of control at the Olympics between the athletes. Like that's like legendary out of control. This has been going on for decades, right? Like that's what everyone said. So then the rumor got started that they actually designed these beds to be narrower and on cardboard. So you couldn't have two people on it. And it was called the anti-sex bed. And it went so viral. I mean, millions of impressions. I mean, hundreds of millions of impressions. Actually. And actually it ended up being really good marketing for Mr. T at the time because he went around and they actually had athletes like debunk it by like having multiple athletes jumping on the bed. These things hold hundreds and hundreds of pounds. It's so firm. It's incredible, right? Like what, what these boxes actually do. And so when it came to this bid and we got the bid for the, the games in, in Paris, right. To do, you know, the bed. Um, it was like, not only does it make sense to do this cardboard, we're going to make it 100% recyclable. So when the games are over, all those cardboard beds can actually be 100% recycled, which is amazing. Instead of having all that, you think about that 16,000 wasteful box springs and all that stuff, right? Like instead of some wood beds, like just ending up in some landfill. Now this whole thing can be recycled. But the beauty is, is that they're stronger than like any traditional stuff. You can put multiple people on it. You can jump. So anyways, we debunked that for sure. But the press has actually been phenomenal because it's a great way to talk about it. So, so for anyone who wants to know, like read the New York Post article, it's phenomenal. It goes through everything and kind of was done and how we debunked it um and ultimately are using it for our advantage because if you think about this right we all all collectively besides the super bowl when is it that we get around one specific event everybody no no, this is it the olympics right it's the one time where it's a one other event where everybody watches and you think about an athlete they spend their entire life to get to the one moment and they may have one chance ever at this thing and it comes down to milliseconds, right? And we all know, especially people in this industry, how vital is having an incredible night's sleep before the biggest event of your entire life. And for the history of the games, people have always complained that this is the worst sleep ever because the beds are horrible. So imagine having a scanning system where every single athlete gets to the games, goes to the body scanning, does the picture front side, puts in their measurements and spits out, this is how you should arrange your bed. And then they go to their room and they flip their blocks to arrange it, to make it good for themselves. Is it perfect for everybody? Of course not. There's no such thing, but is it good for a lot? For sure. And that's the experience the, that's the experience the athletes are having when they get to the, when they get to the Olympics this time around, they're actually going to go through the scanning, the air weave scanning system. It's going to give them their blocks spit out. They're going to go back with this sheet. That's going to tell them what order to put it in. Then they customize it to their preferences. And boom, yep. you've got the chance of having a good night's sleep. There you go. I love All you it. need is an extra millisecond to change your That's life. That's all you need, man. Hey, That's if you need. get just a little bit of extra deep rim rest, you get that full cycle, you never know what can happen, man. I mean, you and you're right. It's, uh, I mean, uh, do we want to take all the credit for every medal? I don't know if we should go that far, but I mean, you know. BT, I'm going to see you like biting into the gold piece. <laughs> I know you're going to yes. walk around the games. You're going to find somebody oh, with sure. a, a gold medal. Let me bite it, please. Just yeah, a little yeah, taste. Come on. Just, just one, you know? No, I'm, I, I can't be more excited. Like, A, I get to go, which is amazing. But, you know, even the week leading up and setting up and, like, being able to set it up and meet the athletes and talk to people, like, I'm just so excited about the process, you know, because this is just something that's so unique. And at the end of the day, I mean, you know, if you think about – it's also really big for, obviously, my company and our organization here, you know, like, for people around the world to understand that, you know, you have an opportunity to outfit – 16,000 athletes. It's pretty incredible. And not only that, every single media, 3,000 media as well. So, That's incredible. Yeah, right, well, yeah, so rad. let's recap here real quickly. So the the bed is not anti-sex. It, you've sold, you're selling these in 250 sort of store-in-a-store concepts throughout all of Japan. And then yep. you're going to go to the to the Olympic Games in Paris this summer. 
And then you're going to come back. And what are you going to do here in the United States? Do you have stores in, here in the United States? Are you bringing that scanning type experience to Airweave yep. uh, operated stores? Are you selling wholesale? Like, what are you doing in the U.S.? Yeah, great question, buddy. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, so right now, you know, the brand has has actually been here for years, like just selling DTC. Um, and mainly it's the, it's our Japanese futon. So that's what the company was originally known for. And there's actually a great market here for it. And we've kind of cornered that as like, this is like what we do. We're the experts. So they've actually been doing tons of these every year. It's wild. I, I had no idea that that was the market and I'm pleasantly surprised by it. You know, but with the bedding and the mattresses, you know, our thing is that we know what the pain points are. I know what the pain points are for retailers, right? Like I, I've been dealing with it for 20 years, uh, lived it, breathed it, you know, and I understand that right now, um, all retailers care about is foot traffic, right? Like if you can't bring in foot traffic, like forget about it, you know? Um, and so obviously our number one priority right now is build, is building our brand here, right? Like, so we're using the, the Olympics, obviously as a huge jumping, you know, point off for that. Um, but we're doing a full rebrand, a full, you know, makeover for the U S market, full website, redo, not everything, um, building out the full program. But at the end of the day, you know, we'll be opening our, our first flagship in Q1 in LA, but then we're going wholesale. Because at the end of the day, for me, walking these floors, having flown around all these last decade or whatever, there's such a gap for luxury firm products that are actually like can answer these different problems. Like, so when you have four different things that people care about, it makes it so simple for an associate to sell because all they have to do is ask the normal questions they ask. And then they find out like, oh, this person's like, super concerned about, you know, like having something that's like allergy free or germs or blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. I got this option here. Oh, this person's super concerned about like their back because they have pain and blah, blah. Okay, cool. I got this thing. Oh, this person's super concerned, whatever it is, right? Like we have these different elements, but the thing is, is as you know, in today's game, in a retail environment, you've got to be experiential. You just got to be right. Like you've got to be able to not only succeed on the sales floor for your slot, but you got to be better. You got to have better BOS. Like, so what, how do you do that? Right. And for us, it's, it's combining the two things that make Japan so incredible. And anybody who's been there will tell you this exact same thing. There is no place in my mind. And I've been to 17 countries around the world. I've never been to somewhere that combines the beauty of life from their culture, all of the the heritage everywhere you go, you know, the you know, you, you'll just go to places and you're like, I've never seen something so beautiful. And then on the other hand, they have the craziest technology. It's both. So it's bizarre. You're like, you walk in the city and you look at some billboard that's like coming at you in 3D and doing something. You're like, what is happening right now? Right? Like you use just the normal toilet at a at a rest stop and you're like, this thing's got ninety thousand buttons. Like, what's happening? Right? I've never I've never felt so good, you know, like with this warm air coming up, right? And then but then you walk out and then right across the street there's a bonsai garden. It's just free to walk through that you're like, this is the most zen, beautiful place I've ever been, right? And so the idea is that that is actually what Airweave is. Like we have the, the heritage of all of that and, 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 but combined with this amazing tech, right? And so, you know, you're getting something that is really unique. And at the end of the day, I think guests resonate with that, right? They resonate with like, I want something unique and different, but, but at the end of the day, like it has to work. And that's the most important part, right? Like it has to work. It has to perform. It has to make it so that you do feel better and you do feel more rested and you do feel like I'm sleeping deeper, longer, and I am cooler and I am all these things. And I do care about recycling. And I, you know, so that stuff all has to be there. And at the end of the day, listen, there's enough space to go around. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you've, you've got an incredible brand like Tempur-Pedic that own this, you know, memory from space. You have incredible brands, you know, like Sleep Number that have owned air. You have avocados that own this natural organic space. You have purple with grid, and then you've got all the traditional brands, you know? But, like, if you think about when was the last big new thing, it's definitely been a while. And I think people are ready for something different and unique. And I think if you think about the marketplace, we've forgotten about the customer who prefers a firm. They've become the forgotten person in all of this, right? Like, when was the last time you're in this industry all the time? You know more than anybody that I know, you would know this. When's the last time you heard an advertisement in our industry that was actually? for someone who wants a firm match. Couldn't tell you. Couldn't, Couldn't tell, tell you. you. But if you, if you go to all these different wholesale partners and you ask them about their collection and you look at their percentage, don't they all sell 15, 20% of their products for firm? Hasn't Stern and Foster had the same extra firm bed for 20 years that they sell three, four grand and every single person carries it because they need to have that one really firm bed. 
Every store has it. Go across America, 60,000 stores are going to have that same SKU, and no one's advertising or even competing against. So shoot, this is a great opportunity because ultimately that means that there's people in that space who really want something, but why not give them an elevated experience, right? Something that's actually going to have not only incredible sleep for them, but then all these other added bets. So anyway, super exciting. It's an incredible story. Well, and congratulations. I know your, your new role is what, Chief Operating Officer? This is true. Yeah. Chief Operating Officer. So, so what's the, the mandate from back at the ranch in Japan? Like, hey, BT, in the United States, this is what we want to accomplish. Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I, the number one uh, 1A, position 1A, is we just we really want to build a brand here that people start to recognize, right? Like so that that and that's very hard to do, right? Like it's very muddy. There's a lot going on. We're heading into a time where you can't even advertise for the all of October and <laughs> part of November, you know. But but post that, you know, I think people are probably going to be looking for some good news, would be my guess, and and, and uh, other things, you know. So at the end of the day, like it starts with us building out a really strong brand here in the state, right? Like having a really, and, and, the, and the reality is, is that this is always hard for any company that comes from another country is that the things that work there don't always resonate here, right? Which is, is hard for someone to be like, no, this is like awesome, right? It's like, yeah, that was awesome. Like just, it's just different, right? Like, so, so we just have to change the playbook a little bit here, which is great, but the team is amazing and, and everybody's been so welcoming. And, um, you know, we have a CEO here in America who moved here. So the number two person in charge of all of, of Airweave in Japan, moved his family here. He's got two young boys. So he just got here and he's incredible sitting in the other room. Um, and, and ultimately, you know, we are partnering together to try to create something that is much more of a, becomes much more of a legacy brand here than, than anyone probably could have imagined, you know? And I think the reality is this, is that, you know, it's like anything, you, you put yourself and surround yourself with amazing people and you provide an amazing product, you have a good opportunity, you know? And I think for me, thankfully, I know a lot of people. And so, I believe that, you know, relationships is such a big part of it. But at the end of the day, relationships can only get you so far. If the product is not incredible. So that's got to be step one, you know. So, you know, we're doing some redesigns and things to make it as appealing as we can to the U.S. audience um, just because it's it's different, right? We're so used to like, oh, if you're going to sell something for a, a premium price, it's got to be 20 inches thick and have all this kind of stuff. But that's like the opposite model of Japan, right? Like everything there is slick, minimalist, thinner. You know what I mean? Like you don't need that. that isn't, that's not luxury there. So for us, it's different. So we're playing those two kinds of things. Like, how do we do it? We'll see. Um, but we've got some pretty incredible ideas. And ultimately, you know, I think, I think people are ready for something unique and something different. I love it. Well, BT, thanks for coming back on the pod to tell us about your new adventure with Airweave. You can go to airweave.com and always check out BT on, on LinkedIn. You're very active on LinkedIn. And obviously, if you're going to be traveling yep. to Paris and going to the Olympic Games and meeting athletes and having those products there supporting, uh, you know, our athletes as they pursue their their yeah. dreams of the games i think it's going to be really fun content to play along with we'll have to have you come back yes. on the pod and talk about that experience later on uh but in the A meantime percent yeah in the meantime say, you tell me well i say let's do a live let's do a live from paris and i mean not that that seems like a no-brainer you know so you're asking me to go to paris with you okay cool i'm in i mean you know let's workshop it <laughs> <laughs> just ask mr also, t i'll ask mr yeah, t yeah, I, yeah. Will. I will i'll ask mr right. t and last thing, last thing for all the listeners of the fam, um, this is this could not be any easier. I feel like most people at this point hopefully have it because there's been so many different opportunities. But if you have never read my book on presenting or my leadership book, I want you to. Um, and in fact, if you're listening to this, you can have it for free. So this is all you need to do. Legitimately, just send me a DM on LinkedIn and say, I heard you on the pod. I want your book. I don't have it. I will send you a new book. Okay. So... We need this industry to understand that like uh, the future of where we're going, I feel like is so open right now. There was the kind of old guard in the mattress space, you know, and it, it's, it's, it's definitely transitioning to these new companies and new things and new people. And it's like, there's a lot of opportunity. You know, at the end of the day, like I love this industry. I have such a, a deep um, connection to it for being in it my, basically my entire life for the last 20 years. And I'm so proud of the development and the energy in, in the places that some people are taking this thing to. And I think a lot of it comes back down to leadership and how much we're reinvesting in the people that we work with. And so for anyone who knows me knows, like I, I really geek out on that stuff and I, and I, I love to connect. Um, so connect with me on LinkedIn, send me a thing. I'll send you my books. Love to do that. 
And thanks for that, man. That's a nice little gift uh, to the members of the fam. And um, I, yes. look, I don't know if it's in the cards, you know, for the future, but I would love to see, you know, we're rounding up products for Sleep Summit 2024. That's going to be in Bentonville, October 8th to the 11th, man. If we could have some air weave there, I'm just saying I'm planting a seed here. We can workshop it. We can definitely workshop it, but you can consider this a a tentative yes, absolutely, one million percent. So I love it. As long, well, as, hey. not, as, long as the price tag's not a million dollars, like I think I'm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's all it's going to end with a ninety nine. I promise you that. <laughs> nice, love it. Hey, one Sweet. thing I would ask you as we as we part ways today, uh, I can't wait to meet the crew from Airweave. You know, I, I love. Yep. Uh, I know that if you join a company, uh, the people have to be spectacular, and um, I would love to. You know, and like you said, there's there's energy. There's new leadership. There are fresh ideas. There are innovative products, and behind all of that, it's people. And so, let's yep. bring the Airweave cr uh, crew into the fam and start getting people plugged in. And um, I think yep. between you know now and whenever you head to Paris, uh, are you guys going to be able to you know bang around market, or is that going to be at the same time when you're going to be over overseas? Yeah, so I'm literally flying basically from Paris directly home, repacking the bag, and heading to market. So okay, so we'll be, see you there. Yeah. So, oh, we will be there hundred percent and I'll have some of the crew. Uh, so, yeah. And as you said, I mean, listen, we're, we're, we're nowhere without the crew. Right. And, and there's an incredible team here. So yeah, I couldn't be more thrilled. And at the end of the day, uh, yeah, we'll bring up, bring as many people by as we can for sure. Awesome. Brett Thornton, the chief operating officer of Airweave. Thanks my friend for being on the, on the podcast friend, friend of the show and a member of the fam. Hey, if you're listening, uh, be sure to share this with somebody, um, you know, give it a like, give it a comment on, on YouTube on LinkedIn, uh, on all the socials. And of course, be sure to head over to thefam.com and subscribe. We've got our all new Fam Plus membership, which is going to help you you know, figure out how to sleep better uh, with real science from Dr. Kimberly Lemke. And all of that ties directly into the mattress, even if it's made of squiggly fishing line that looks absolutely <laughs> incredible. I love it. I love the look of it, by the way. Can't wait to get my yep. hands on it. BT, thanks again for being on the show, man. Thanks, my friend. Appreciate you, buddy.